This video provides general information about how long-range regular and long-range smart technologies work and when you need to use them and when you don't need to use them. Let's start off why you need to use a long-range technology. Long-range allows us to build and expand our displays so that they can extend beyond a controller. So think about it as a hub and a spoke solution. And the reason we have this is that these CPUs that are on top of a controller are expensive. They contain expensive chips and they usually combine the data coming out of them sourced either locally from an SD card or from a sequencing application over a network cable along with power from a power supply and send out data. So this is what you would typically see. 16 cables coming out of the bottom of a control box going directly to pixels and that would be a local device. And when you have a lot of pixels in one place, that makes a lot of sense, such as a large tree using 16, 32, or 48 outputs. We'll typically have just localized power supplies supplying power to outputs along with data to those devices. But what if, for example, in this case, we wanted to put some candy canes at one side of the yard and something on the house in another part of the yard, and then we have our mega tree. So we might hook this controller, and the controller can be identified as a device that has a display on it with some buttons that you can control. And this controller outputs data to the 16 cables, and that combines with power to power the mega tree. But then you have these jacks, and these jacks are typically red in color to identify that they are for long range. We need to be able to send that data further. Now, why does this matter? Why don't you just run a cable from one of these? The reason is, is that data can only extend from a controller approximately 25 feet. Yes, there are many other special exceptions, but the general rule of thumb is about 25 feet is the distance we can go from a main control box where the data is being generated to the device or pixels that we're controlling. Let's say that that device is further out, or you want to separate the control of those devices. So you maybe want to buy them separately as you expand your display. Long range is perfect for this, and that allows you to add in devices that send only data using these jacks, and there could be multiple jacks uh, to 12 of them, to a long range device, something further away. Now, uh, you may have a dedicated device, even a controller that has just jacks, or a combination is more common with a board for the local connected pixels for high density element like a matrix or a mega tree, and then these extra long ranges go out to those individual elements, again, like a house outline or candy canes, arches, and such. Now, the first thing to understand is that there are two major technology types. There's long range regular, which is very, very simple to use and works with both of our CPU types. So shown here is a AlphaPix Evolution CPU and the other offered CPU is a Hinxpix Pro CPU. Now, the Hinxpix Pro can be used with regular and smart technologies. The AlphaPix is a simpler controller and works only with long range regular output. And let's show you a long range regular output. This is a long range regular receiver. It can be identified because it only has one jack. And this is a limitation of long range. Now you can send, uh, depending on the controller, 340 or 680 pixels worth of data for each individual output, but that's it. The data comes from the jack on the receiver. So for example, a Cat5 cable from here goes to here and that's it. There can be no additional long range receivers on that jack. Now, if you have simple setups, this can be a cheaper solution because long range regular is less expensive. It is also easier to set up than regular long range smart receivers. And the long range smart receivers also require a more expensive CPU, the Hinxpix Pro. But with that additional complexity, we do get a lot more functionality. So let's look at a long range smart receiver. So here's an example of a four output long range smart receiver. And you'll notice that it has a 
input jack, it says line in, and a line out and line out. What's happening here is that we can daisy chain these. We can daisy chain up to 16 of these receivers on a single jack from a long range expansion. Now there are some limitations and I'll explain what those are in just a moment. But this does allow you to extend out, come in on one jack and then split out either Y by going to one receiver on this jack and one receiver on that jack. And they can be done in any configuration. They can be daisy chained one after another, just one behind the other, or come out here, daisy chain to one, and then Y off to another, or daisy chain on further. You'll also notice that unlike the regular receiver, the regular receiver has no configuration. There's no little dip switches or indicators to tell it uh, what its address is, and that's not necessary because it gets its address from the fact that it's plugged into a Cat5 cable port, and that's configured directly in the controller. Now, in a long-range smart receiver, because they are daisy-chained, we need to tell the data where it needs to drop off for each given output or receiver, and you can see dip switches up here that allow for that, and we allow up to 16 of these receivers at four outputs to be daisy chain. And so we have some switches and this little chart over here allows you to know which switches should be set to which order uh, depending upon where you configure it. Now we also have basically this four output receiver multiplied times four and that's what this is. So you'll notice the dip switches are half. There's only two switches instead of the four switches shown here. This is nothing more then four of these, all put together, daisy chained one after another. And we have an input and an output. So we can still daisy chain these. You can also daisy chain these together with other four outputs or even 16s. Now I will say that there is some limitations here and let's understand why those limitations exist. Now. When we send data to these devices, it needs to come via a Cat5 cable. Now, there's a limit because we need to send this data a long way, and we need to do it in an inexpensive way and in a reliable way. So we use a protocol called RS-422, and that protocol allows us to send this data over very inexpensive Cat5 or Cat6 cable from this jack over to the receivers. Now, in a Cat5 cable, there are eight wires, and that means that we have four pairs of wires. So, in a regular long range receiver, this differential receiver being regular receiver, the first pair of wires is linked to the output one, two, three, four. So it's out pair one, pair two, pair three, pair four, and that's it. That terminates at a long range regular receiver like we have here. Now, when we go to a long range smart receiver, the same thing happens. The first pair of wires links to the first output, second, third, and fourth. But then those pair of wires go through this board, get reamplified and cleaned up for their next journey onto the next receiver into one of these two outputs and the data is traveling along the same pair of wires. So what is happening is, is if we have two of these back to back, these receivers that are smart, the data is actually coming down the first pair of wires, going to this one, and then on to the next receiver where it also is coming out the first output. So the data for the pairs of wires are not linked here on each output, the pairs of wires are actually linked on each output grouping. So one, then pair two, pair three, pair four. And then if we plug in another daisy chain or wide long range smart receiver, that is still pair one, pair two, pair three, pair four. Now it should be noted that these two technologies cannot be interconnected on the same Cat5 cable. So if you have a long range smart receiver, it must only be connected with other long range smart receivers. You cannot put a long range regular receiver at the end of a long range smart receiver, but you can connect a long range regular receiver to this jack
Then on the second jack, connect a long-range smart receiver, which connects to another long-range smart receiver, which connects to, say, another long-range smart receiver. So as you can see, long-range smart has much, much more advantages in terms of expansion. So if a customer is planning an expansion and wants the most possible expansion capabilities so that anything that they may be planning for the future is usually possible, we do that with long range smart as opposed to regular. If you're a customer that prefers a very, very simple solution and don't need that high level expansion, a long range regular receiver is a better choice. It will be easier to configure and set up. It will also be less expensive because the boards and the CPUs can be less expensive. Now, long range smart has shown here is four outputs these are spi and they're pixels one key thing to also be aware of that you can only use three wire pixels on long range uh, that is not normally a problem all 2811 type pixels are that if you have a four wire pixel such as 6803 uh, where there is a data and a clock plus a positive and negative those do not work with any smart receiver from any vendor um, so despite the fact that you see four plugs in here, this is not possible. All right, we also offer a 16 AC receiver uh, that uh, can control legacy lights. And there are other units in planning for future release, including a matrix board for P10 pipe pixels and a dumb receiver, not available at the time of July 2021. Okay, now let's talk about some of the limitations here. So let's go back. So each jack coming out can output the maximum number of pixels possible based on the CPU. And by CPU, this is a alpha pix evolution and that controller can output 340 pixels worth of data. So that means that if we were to look at this long range regular receiver, 340 pixels could be connected to this jack or this plug, 340 to this, 340 to this, and 340 to that. That's it. This is a regular receiver and it can't send data down the line. So the maximum you can connect is 340. Now to connect that many pixels, you would also need to connect additional unique and more advanced power methods including power injection, which is not supported by Holiday Coro. So this setup here would usually control around 125 pixels per output, nothing unusual, no unusual configuration for power. Now, if you connected this same board to a Hinx Pix Pro CPU, not shown, it would now be able to control 680 pixels on each individual output, again, irrespective of power. So you still have to power those pixels. This is solely just the data limitation. So 680 pixels here, 680 pixels here, and so on. And a long range regular receiver will work fine with the Hinx Pix Pro along with smart receivers. So let's talk about what happens when you have multiple smart receivers. So if we had two of these smart receivers and they were linked from one jack here a cat5 cable coming out and we were going to this jack and then off of this jack the output we had another four output long range receiver we can distribute across each plug plug one 680 pixels now you could do that in any way you could put it in 340 on the first output number one 340 on the second output number one on the second receiver smart receiver or you could distribute it to 100 and 100, or uh, 100 on the first one and 580 pixels on the second output number one. But there is never more than a combination of 680 pixels on all the number one jacks of all four output receivers on this one single jack coming from this receiver. Now, normally with four output long range smart receivers, this is not a problem. Um, generally, we don't usually have more than a few connected. Uh, 
Uh, but you could have something where you could have 50, then 50, then 50, then 50, and so on, all the way to the end. Uh, where this is generally a problem is when you have high pixel counts on a board like this. Now, as I mentioned before, this board, 16 long range, is nothing more than four of these out, the four of the four output units. So that means that there are actually four, then four, then four, then four. So they're linked together. So in this case, it is one, then five, then nine, then, hmm, I'm not sure when then. Um, and they're linked together. So let's go ahead and do some math. So if you have all those linked together, we have four outputs on each cable or each pair of wires. So again, it's like having four of these linked end to end. So if we figure out how many we have, if we take 680 divided by four, that means we can have a maximum of 170 pixels if we had just one board connected to one cable, nothing else coming out of it, 170 here, 170 here, 170 pixels here, 170 pixels here, and so on. Now, again, this is irrespective of power. You would need to power this, and this board cannot power that many pixels directly from these power inputs. So we're solely just talking data. Now, what happens if you only used 100 pixels on this entire board? Well, in that particular case, we would have 680 times four, so there are four pairs of wires, 680 pixels per pair of wires. That means 2,720. Now, if we uh, took and subtracted out uh, 1,600 pixels, so let's say each of these outputs has 100 pixels, that means that we have 1,120 pixels that we could then send down this line of additional data off to other receivers, including another 16 or maybe another 4 or even an AC receiver. So the key to understanding this is, is that there is a pair of wires, and each pair of wires inside of a Cat5 cable can carry either 340, if you are using a long-range regular receiver with the AlphaPix evolution, or 680 pixels, either with a long-range regular or long-range smart receiver per output or per pair of wires, depending upon how many outputs you have. That concludes this video. If you have any questions, feel free to reach us by using the contact link on HolidayCore.com.